achieved. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Studio Day Heffrey. You know, it's like 9.15 p.m. I was outside today in the heat for a long time, and I was like, yeah, I'm just not feeling the video today. And then I took a nap, and then I remembered that I wrote to myself last night, stop slacking, get her done. So here we are, okay? Welcome to Studio Day Heffrey. The Cowboys released Kai Forbath. Guy goes 10 for 10 for you last year, and you just kick him out of camp. You don't even get to compete. Um, and that's cool, you know, just kicker. It's just a kicker, but he was perfect. I don't think I like it for being honest. I don't think I, um, unless you were doing him a favor where you're saying, well, let's get out. We'll let you get out on the market here instead of waiting to the end of camp. And maybe you can go find a job somewhere else. But if he doesn't find a job somewhere else, um, then I'll be like, dude, why didn't you actually have a kicking competition? Like, what are we what are we doing? I'm mad at the special teams from a year ago. It's not hard to have two kickers in camp. You got 80 people. Two of them can be kickers. Okay? Let Kai compete for the job. Don't just hand it over. Although we all knew that Greg Zerline was going to be the kicker because he got guaranteed money. So, yes, unless something went terribly wrong, he was going to win the job. But we've seen what happens when you go into camp with one kicker and you don't let him compete. It's dumb. So, unless they're doing him a favor... And Greg, the leg's been all up in the facility just dropping bombs, showing that last year was a fluke and he wasn't healthy or whatever. But, yeah, Kai Forbath is gone. That's all the kicker talk you're going to get out of me today. We got a bunch of topics to get to because you guys are awesome. Leave in the comments what you want to talk about tomorrow, and that's where we'll get content from. And I got a whole bunch of them from yesterday. So thank you, guys. Appreciate you, and especially appreciate the 15 percenters who make it or uh, who are – subscribe to the channel and have the notifications turned on so that they're making sure they don't miss a video. You guys are the real MVP. Uh, also in the comments today, leave me your favorite fictional TV character of all time. Uh, I should probably have one, huh? I should probably have one ready. Uh, anybody from the wire? Like Omar? Omar's up there. Uh, Walt White's up there from Breaking Bad. Uh, what are my favorite shows of all time? Oh, Game of Thrones. The um, God, Jeff, you read the books before the TV show came out. What's his name? Prince Oberyn of Dorne. Dude who took down the mountain. Just got a little too cocky. Uh, and then he got his face smashed off. Sorry if you haven't seen Game of Thrones. Spoiler alert. Pretend I didn't say that. Uh, okay. Let's get to the stuff. Get to the stuff. I like this one a lot. Okay. Hold on. Let me find it. Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Somebody asked me about CD Lamb. Okay. I'll find it. Don't worry. I'll find it. I know where I put it. I put it somewhere. Uh, he says, where does CeeDee Lamb as a prospect stack up in the last three to five years? Here we go. This is Chase Dyer. I want to make sure I get your name in there, buddy. If you redrafted the last three to five years, where would CD rank with the wide receivers? Uh, this is interesting because I was like, off the top of my head, I was like, oh, you know, I really like CeeDee Lamb as a prospect. I thought he was a top 10, probably top six or seven player in this draft. And then I went back over the last five years of NFL draft classes. So 2019... The first wide receiver taken was Hollywood Brown. I like CD better as a prospect than Hollywood. Nikhil Harry was the second wide receiver taken, which was a mistake when they did it. Loved Debo as a prospect, but not as much as I like CD Lamb. AJ Brown and DK Metcalf. I had Metcalf as a first round graded guy, but not as high as CD Lamb. I love Deontay Johnson too, but I had him as a second rounder. Okay, so higher than anybody in 2019. He was my top receiver in 2020. So, so far, CD Lamb for me is the best receiver prospect of the last two years. Then let's go back to 2018. In 2018, the top receivers taken DJ Moore and then Calvin Ridley. And uh, I had them graded in the opposite order, but that's cool. Uh, I would have C.D. Lamb graded higher than both of them. So now we are looking at, and Cortland Sutton was in that class, and then Dante Pettis was drafted too early. Anthony Miller I liked. Uh, but whatever. So now we're up to uh, three years, right? And by the way, this, this uh, would apply to Jerry Judy too. Jerry Judy and C.D. Lamb I really like as prospects. So they would be the best two receiver prospects of 2020, 2019, 2018. Then we go to 2017, and where is my 2017 draft? It's Rachia, Corey Davis, Mike Williams, John Ross, 
I got news for you. As prospects, I like Jerry Judy and CeeDee Lamb better than both of them. So now 2020, 19, 18, 17, they're my best two uh, receiver products of the last four years. We go to, uh, did I just do 2016? No, okay, so we go to 2016. And this is where you got to sometimes look yourself in the face and go, dude, you're not perfect. It's like, dude, perfect. Dude, you're not perfect. Because I think, if I'm being honest, I got to go to 2016 to find a guy that I graded as highly as CD and Jerry Judy. And that was Laquan Treadwell. So, no one's perfect. Leave me alone. Don't yell at me. So, CD's right there at the very top of the last five years of wide receiver prospects. For me, it would probably go Laquan Treadwell, CD Lamb, Jerry Judy, and it's so dumb when you look back at it. You're like, why did you like that guy so much? Well, because you couldn't see the future, and you screwed it up, and that happens. Uh, but I'm a big CD Lamb fan. Now you know, okay? Um, that was sweet, sweet Kai Forbath, CD Lamb, and we are into the mailbag where I got a bunch of good questions from you guys. I love you. Thank you. It's going to be really weird when you get a notification at like 9.45 or 10 p.m. saying Jeff put up a video. But, hey, sometimes you're slacking, and you got to give yourself a little whoops. Go get it, buddy. Um, David, David G. He said, this old line looked a lot better once they brought in Columbo to coach the line. I wonder how much of an effect will it have going with Joe Philbin, seeing as how it didn't go well with Paul Alexander. I know it's a new offense, but with guys like Colin Smith and Martin still blocking on this line, how much will it affect them changing philosophies this time? That's a great question. Because I was stunned at how much, at how bad a hire uh, Paul Alexander was for this offensive line, where he was asking guys who are perennial pro bowlers and all pros to completely change the way that they do things. I think having made that mistake before, the organization will not let Joe Philbin, and I'm not insinuating that he would come in and want to change the way that um, these guys just fundamentally block. I don't think he would do that. Because who would do that? Only Paul Alexander. Um, so I, I don't think there's a big risk there. Just because once you've gone through it once, I think whether it's Will McClay or uh, Jerry or Steven telling McCarthy, you tell them, hey, um, you know, we got these guys that are really, really good. So if you could tell whoever you hire, don't F it up. You know, just coach your best, but please don't tell them the way you've been doing something for a decade in terms of your fundamentals is wrong. Just let them do what they do and tell them what we're doing schematically. Thanks. And let's see here. Do you think the pandemic, this is from Sean, Sean Felty. Do you think the pandemic will play a significant role in the NFL season? The MLB is having issues and they play a mostly non-contact sport. You're my favorite Cowboys channel. Oh, thank you. I love you. Uh, I want to no comment that one. Because my brain tells me, yeah, COVID's going to affect the season. I mean, baseball's, what are we, a weekend, week and a half, and 20% of the league's been shut down, and there's a rumor rooski going around that on Monday they may be uh, shutting it down for a while for everybody. Uh, at least I saw that report that, that could happen. And in football, we are talking about a roster that is almost twice as big. So, yeah, pretend that I didn't answer that. Because I want the answer to be no. I want my football. But my brain is like, dude, if they baseball, all it took was one dude from the Marlins who wanted to go party. You don't think anybody out of 53 times 32 wants to go party? So let's just be hopeful, you know? Let's just be hopeful. Rowan Donahue. Jeff, I enjoy your work. Thanks for the content. Thank you. Please, for a moment, imagine COVID-19 has no effect on the NFL in ways that compromise any team seriously. You've just been visited by Doc and Marty McFly or Kang the Conqueror. You're informed the Cowboys are 8-0 at the halfway point. You're told the defense has been superb, but given no statistics or scores from any game, how would you describe what must have happened? In as much hypothetical detail per projected starter by name, and what type of numbers they must have, sacks and interceptions, who's dominating, et cetera, as you will. Hype us up. Man, That okay, that's a lot of ask. Uh, all right, you're 8-0. If the Cowboys are 8-0 at the halfway point, 
Then at the halfway point, Dak Prescott's obviously a, um, he is an MVP candidate at this point. Of course, because the offensive line, Tyler Biotish has come into camp and won the center job outright and is playing well. Connor McGovern came in and snatched to the left guard job. And so you've got these young guys who are just getting started, but boy, they're sandwiched in there with Zach Martin and Tyron on the outsides of them. And so you're back to protecting the quarterback like they did in 2016. You're paving the way for Zeke to get five yards of carry. C.D. Lamb, seamless transition to the league. Blake Jarwin means that your tight end, instead of averaging eight yards a catch, is now getting 11 a catch. You're zipping it around the field. Dak, through eight games, has thrown 17 touchdowns. He's run for four more. Uh, make it 18 touchdowns. He's run for four more. Zeke's run for eight touchdowns. C.D. Lamb at the halfway points already got five of them. Amari Cooper's got six. Michael Gallup's got four. Jarwin's got four. Did I just give too many for what Dak's throwing? No, I think we're okay here. So you're killing it like that, and it's just greatness. It's greatness. There's tons of pre-snap motion. Teams don't know what's coming. They got to show you their coverages. Uh, they got to declare what they're doing. And so Dak's getting to see what's going on pre-snap, and he's not afraid to check out of a stupid first down run play. And you're cruising right along. And on defense, boy, let me tell you on defense, since we're eight no here, Alden Smith is back. To his, this is top of my head, what was that, 2014, 2015? He is back to his form when he first came into the league and just stormed in there and started smashing everybody. Uh, he's just in there terrorizing quarterbacks. Both he and Tank are on track for 12 sack seasons, maybe even 14. But the best thing that's happened so far this year in, in fantasy world is Gerald McCoy and Don Terry Poe have given you a presence on the interior where you're not getting bullied on the defensive line. You're stout there up the middle, and offensive linemen are not getting free access to your linebackers, and everybody's just doing their job. Nobody's trying to be a hero, so Leighton Vander Esch and Jalen Smith are both on track to go to the Pro Bowl because they're no longer having to worry about guys getting cleanly to the second level and wiping them out of the plays. Jalen's not having to stop and start a bunch to try to beat people, and it's just going super well for your linebackers. Shout out to your new interior defensive linemen for making it happen. Trayvon Diggs won a starting job in camp, and dude is out of here. He's got three picks in the first half of the year. Uh, Cheeto, now that he's allowed to challenge guys at the line of scrimmage and be more disruptive and play more instinctually, has been able to make some plays on the ball. Jordan Lewis himself has three picks. He's also got three sacks. Heck of a blitzer that Jordan Lewis is. Xavier Woods has three of his own. Ha ha, Clinton Dix has a couple. And you're just kind of balling out there. You know, Reggie Robinson's a special teams demon. You know, he's already blocked the kick this year. Things are going great. I don't know. Is that enough? Is that good enough? CeeDee Lamb's got 517 yards through eight weeks. Mari Cooper's got 640. Michael Gallup's got 517. I don't want to put him or CeeDee ahead of each other. Just want to put them right there together. So that's that. Okay? Enjoy. Mike McCarthy's going to win coach of the year. Um. Okay, we did that. Zeke squad, why is it taking forever for the league to reinstate Gregory? I don't know the details. I just know that the people that I talked to knew that Alden Smith was going to get reinstated first and that there's more to Gregory, whatever that means. But I believe Gregory is still expecting to be reinstated and hopefully play football this year. All I know is uh, off-the-record whisperuskies, which are just kind of like, don't get as optimistic about Randy as Alden Smith, which obviously was for good reason now. Uh, Dean Julia. Jeff, I made it to 1548, and I'm in the 15% club MVP. Answer me this. Could there be any interest in reuniting McCarthy with Clay Matthews in a designated pass rusher role? Could be a more affordable option. Veteran who is an integral part of McCarthy championship. Cover your ears. If you're a Clay Matthews guy, I think he's washed. Yep, yeah, think he's washed. Chris Keating says, how many wins you got on Warzone? I believe I am at 84 or 85. So either Randy Moss or Ocho Cinco is where I currently sit because I play with guys who win for me, which is great. I do want to shout out Matthew because in the last video I told you, stop calling boneless chicken wings um, boneless wings because they're not wings. They're nuggets, okay? A wing 
has bones in it. It's a chicken wing. You're eating chicken nuggets if you're eating boneless wings. Now, Matthew said, it is a really big chicken nugget slash strip. And if you're trying to multitask while eating wings, you can use a fork, not have sauce-covered fingers while doing other stuff. Boneless wings do have a purpose. I think that's a great point. They have a purpose, for sure. There's some good utility there. Just make sure you call them nuggets or strips, depending on how big they are. Uh, All right, I have a whole bunch more, but I'll try to get to you guys tomorrow. And remember to leave in the comments what you want to talk about tomorrow. Turn those notifications on. Let me know if you made it to 1523 here. 1523, I just want to see. Anybody still here? You still here? Anybody still here? And I want to know your favorite fictional TV character of all time in the comments as well. Okay? Khal Drogo, Daenerys Targaryen. Why am I just going with Game of Thrones, guys? I don't know. Uh, and I will catch you guys tomorrow, all right? Also, let me know if the quality on this is higher. I tinkered with some, some settings. Apparently, I was going in 480p. My video quality went down, even though my equipment quality went up. So, let's see if it's fixed. Okay? Great. Love you. Bye.